everyone. Welcome to Virtual Microwave Lab. In this lab, I am going to explain you about the different devices we use in microwave workbench. And I will explain the property of all these devices. So let us start with the power supply, which is used in microwave workbench. The most important type of power supply, which is used in microwave lab is the gun power supply, which you can read here. This uh, power supply is used for supplying the power to the gun diode as well as the pin diode. So there are two cables to supply the power. First one for the gun supply and the second one is for the pin supply. Let us switch on this and then we will understand how we operate this particular instrument. So first we have to switch on the power and then from here we have a on off button and we can switch on. So the first knob which is in the top is called as gun bias and using this we can increase the biasing voltage of gun oscillator. So when this button is in up, then it will be voltage and if it is down, then it will show current. So let us take in up, it is showing voltage and when you increase the gun, power, gun bias, the voltage will keep on increasing. So based on the oscillation, we have to fix this voltage to get the oscillation of gun diode. Then next one, this knob is for the modulation frequency and by increasing this, we can increase the frequency of modulation. The third knob is the amplitude and when we turn it, it gives the modulation amplitude for the pin diode. So these two knobs are for the pin diode and this knob is for the gun diode. Now I am going to explain you about the gun diode and the pin diode. So this is our gun oscillator and inside this we have gun diode here and this is heat sink. Because of oscillation generated by the gun diode, there will be heat generated and for that we need to have heat sink and apart from that we also need one fan which we can see here. So this fan is used for cooling down the gun oscillator. So whenever we switch on the gun power supply, we have to switch on the fan at the same time pointed towards this heat sink. And the gun power supply should be connected at this point so that the gun oscillator will get power supply from the gun power supply. This is pin modulator and there is a pin diode inside this which is modulated with certain amplitude and frequency and a cable is connected at this point and this is inserted between the microwave workbench. When we discuss about the full workbench, I will show you where it is inserted. The next device is called isolator. So this is isolator which isolates the input and output and it will be a unidirectional transmission. So when we send something from here, it will come out from this second port but when something is reflected back towards port 2, it won't reach at port 1. So inside this, there is a ferrite material which causes 45 degree rotation and isolates the input and output signal.
Next to this, we have a frequency meter. So this frequency meter is a waveguide frequency meter, which we can see. This is the cross section of waveguide on both the side. So this frequency meter is connected in between the microwave workbench and by rotating the top, these two lines can be shifted vertically, either in downward direction or in upward direction. So if we rotate in anti-clockwise direction, the two lines are getting pushed to downward direction. And if we are rotating in clockwise direction, it is getting pushed to upward direction. To read the frequency, we have to we have to find a point where we will get deflection in the VSWR meter. Let's say at this point we are getting deflection. So to read the frequency, we have to take these two lines and the red line which is intersecting both the lines and then we can read the measurement in between these two lines. For example, right now, this frequency value is 10.7 and here it is 10.75. So the line is 10.715 because this will be 10.72, 73, 74 and 75. So the first subsection is 10.705. So the second subsection will be 10.71. So third subsection will be 10.715. So right now this frequency is 10.715 gigahertz. If we just rotate to this, it will be 10 10.7, 10.705, 10.71, 10.715, 10.72. 10.725, so this is 10.75. So always we have to read the reading between these two lines. Should not confuse with the scale which is above the top line or below the bottom line. The reading should be always taken between the two lines. So this is about the frequency meter. In few experiments like wavelength measurement or unknown impedance measurement, we have an instrument called as waveguide slotted section in which there is a waveguide and in between the waveguide top uh, surface, there is a slot cut exactly in the middle. and there is a probe which can move along the slotted section. So we can see inside of this probe. So there is a thin wire which used to receive all the electromagnetic energy which is passing through the waveguide. And there will be more energy in between the waveguide since most of the energy is carried out by T10 mode, so the slot is created exactly in the middle of the waveguide. The output cable will be connected here to the VSWR meter. And this knob is used to move this probe along the waveguide. So by moving the probe, we can find out the standing wave maxima and minima along the waveguide. And by finding the two consecutive minima point, we can find the distance between two consecutive minima, which is equal to half of the wavelength. In some experiment, we need to calculate the power directly. For that, we have to connect a detector mount at the end of the microwave bench where there will be a pin detector and a 
cable, output cable is connected here to the VSWR meter to calculate the total power received at the output port. This is called a matched termination, which is a 50 ohm load. And whenever we don't want any reflection from the waveguide, then we connect this at those end. So this is a 50 ohm load and inside we have a matching section which will not allow any reflected wave from this load. Now I am going to discuss about different types of microwave network which is used in microwave lab for the experiment and the first one I am discussing here is a directional coupler. We can see that a directional coupler is four port network. So total number of ports are one, two, three and four. The, this port is matched. As we see, there is a small patch here. So it, it shows that this particular port is matched. So to read this port number, we can start from any point and read the port number as, let's say this is port 1, this will be port 2, this will be port 3 and this will be port 4. So port 1 to 2 is called as throw port as there is a same waveguide connected here. Port 1 to 3 there will be coupling in between. So since there are two waveguide which is connected together in parallel, some power will be coupled to this port. So this port is known as coupled port. When we consider port 1 as input port, port 2 will be throw port and port 3 will be coupled port and port 4 will be isolated port. Similarly, if we change the orientation of this waveguide, then the port nomenclature will also change. Let's say this is port 1. So this will be your throw port because it's directly connected. So this port is throw port and this port is coupled port which is right now matched. And this will be port 4. So to measure the coupling, we have to measure input power and the coupled power. So to measure coupling, we need to keep this, connect this micro network, which is called directional coupler in this way, so that the port power at port one is calculated and power at port three is calculated. And the ratio of this power is known as coupling coefficient of this directional coupler. Similarly, to calculate the Insertion loss, we can connect this port at input port and port 2 as output port and the measurement of power between 1 and 2 is insertion loss. To calculate its isolation property, we have to connect the power divider in this way so that the power input power will be given from here which is port 1 and output will be calculated at port 4 and the ratio of power P4 and P1 will give us the isolation of this device. And for calculating the directivity of this device, we need to excite from this port, that is, this will be port 1. So port 2 will be the isolated port, uh, port 2 will be the matched port and port 3 will be the coupled port and port 4 will be the isolated port. So when we give power at port 1, we measure power at 3 and 4. So the ratio between P3 and P4 will give us the directivity of this directional coupler. Now I am going to discuss about the circulator. So circulator is a three port network, which we can see from here. It's a three port network. It's a non-reciprocal network. That means the power will be only uh, transmitted in one direction. So if we are giving power at this port and it is coupling at 
this port that means power this one is port 1 port 2 and port 3 so power transmission will be from 1 to 2 2 to 3 and 3 to 1 it will not be in other direction so when we measure its power we have to make the third port as matched and we calculate power input at port 1 and power output at port 2. Similarly, when we match at port 2, we calculate power at port 3 and give power at port 1 and based on that we calculate its S matrix which is a non-reciprocal network and all the three ports are matched to its characteristic impedance. The third device is a four port network which is known as magic T. And this magic T is having four port. One port is known as sum port and this port is known as difference port. So when two different power is supplied from these two ports the power will be added at this port. So let's say this is port 1 and this is port 2. Then power will be added together at port 3 and it will be subtracted at port 4. So due to this it is known as magic T because one port gives the summation of the power and another port gives the difference of the power. In my next video, I am going to do the experiment and then I will show you how to take the output. Thank you.